A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to our video. Last week's video on the integral of cosine squared, link in the description, left me in utter shock. I was so confused about all the comments you were leaving there. Here in Germany, as far as I am concerned, as at least in university, when you deal with the integral of sine squared or cosine squared, for example, you usually basically solve it using integration by parts because it's a very cool and very intuitive method to do so. But all the Americans were just blowing my ass up. Like they were telling me the methods I showed were like the standard methods and how do you even do it using integration by parts that's so counterintuitive etc etc. And I was seriously utterly shocked because this came as a real surprise. I thought I had a good video at hand where I show alternative methods of solving it but then you told me these were the standard methods. So I decided to actually go out of my way and create another video on the integral sine squared, this time using integration by parts. As a little bonus, as a little added bonus, you're also going to see the integral of cosine squared. Basically just as a little extra. It's going to fall um, into our hands using the derivation of the sine squared integral. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. By the way, if you haven't checked out Flemish Wood yet, my woodworking channel, please go over there. I posted a very nice video a few days ago, which turned out really well editing wise and commentary wise. So I would highly appreciate it if you could leave some feedback on the video over there. Link down there in the description and up here in the info box. And now we are going to dive right in. So, Using integration by parts is actually, in my opinion, way more intuitive than using the, I don't know, double angle formulas or the like, or system of equations. The, using double angle formulas and trigger identities here is just unintuitive, in my opinion. And, and this is just a matter of learning weird identities. And this is not the ways mathematics should be learned, especially not in India or the like, where you just have to learn everything and just remember everything out of your mind, which is so counterintuitive and just stupid and I prefer the good old methods. And why should you use integration by parts here? Well, because integration by parts is just a regular um, product rule in reverse basically. You integrate the product rule and the product rule is one of the first differentiation rules that you actually learn. Trigon trigonometric stuff comes way later at least in the German cu curriculum and this is why integration by parts is just way more intuitive than doing trigonometric stuff. So here we go. How can you use integration by parts here? For integration by parts you need two things. You need something to integrate and something to differentiate. We are going to use just tabular integration because it's easy to get an overview here. What you're going to notice is that the sine squared is nothing other than the sine times the sine. So we don't have many methods um, or just alternatives left. We are going to differentiate the sine and we are going to integrate it on the other hand. Now, differentiation and integration of the trigonometric functions is very easy. Differentiating the sine gives us the cosine of x and integrating the sine gives us the negative cosine of x. And now we can just do the usual thing. Integration by parts tells us that we are going to multiply these together, giving us at first negative the sine of x times the cosine of x. And then what we are going to be left with is the integral of negative and negative becomes positive, positive in integral of um, cosine squared of x, integrate with respect to x. Now we are at a situation here where you could run into a few contradictions if you're not careful um, because you could do integration by parts even further and land at weird situations especially if you have upper and lower bounds applied. But we don't have that here and what we can do is we can substitute the cosine squared for 1 minus the sine squared. Okay and at, at this point you don't have many options left you could possibly do except for substituting the cosine squared as being 1 minus the sine squared. By plugging 1 minus the sine squared into here we are going to end up with the integral of on the one hand 1 and by using the linearity of the integral we are going to break it up into also negative the integral of the sum squared of x integrate with respect to x. As mentioned before this right here is just going to evaluate to x very easily and what you are going to notice now here is and this is what my um, physics professor called phoenix integration because you are basically reviving the original integral from the ashes and getting it over here on the other side too. This right here is our original integral that you want to evaluate. So why not add it on both sides giving us two times our integral that we want to evaluate meaning two times 
the integral of the sine squared of x dx is equal to, well, we are going to get x and then minus sine of x times the cosine of x. And all of this plus some arbitrary constant c, but give me a second because we got two times the integral. We don't want that, we just want to evaluate the integral of sine squared, meaning we are going to divide both sides by two because it's not equal to zero, giving you this beautiful thick individual. And this is how you can evaluate it using integration by parts. Um, it's a very easy method and just really intuitive in my opinion and it basically just falls into your hands. Do you know what also falls into your hands? Our today's sponsor, <laughs> brilliant, no, not yet, brilliant comes later. But what also falls into our hands is if you take a look at this first line right here, including part of the second line, is that we also get an expression for the cosine squared here. We can go this whole route backwards and basically find out what the cosine squared integral is going to be. We're going to add the sine and the cosine multiplied together on both sides, giving us that the integral of the cosine squared x dx is equal to, and now we are going to get sine of x times the cosine of x, and then we are going to add the integral of sine squared of x dx to it. And now you can see that we can make use of the same arguments here once again. What we can do is we can turn this into one minus the cosine squared of x and then taking the integral, bringing the cosine squared of x integral over here and then dividing everything by two, leaving us overall with a factor of x here and just all of this divided by two. And now we got ourselves both identities for the integral of the sine squared and the integral of the cosine squared. I mean, I have made videos here on this channel where I generalized this to an nth exponent with upper and lower bounds, for example, linked down there in the description. But this right here is actually pretty cool using integration by parts and I really like this method way more than using trigonometric identities that you just have to know out of your mind to solve integrals like this. But with whichever me method you prefer, I really don't care. As long as you get to the final answers, then everything is fine. And if you are interested in more trigonometry, integration, differentiation, substitution, etc., then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor Brilliant, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Brilliant, if you're not familiar with the website and also app yet, is an online learning platform which provides you with some of the best STEM content out there on the internet. Their interactive learning concept is by far one of the best that I have encountered yet and they are going to make it so easy for you to learn new things. It's actually quite surprising how much stuff you can pick up from their courses. I wasn't a fan of online learning resources before learning about Brilliant. I mean, I have tried out stuff like Skillshare before and, and other sites, but no one really get near the level of, on the one hand, entertainment and just um, educational, um, how can I call it, just educational precision that you find over on their website. It's really a good concept that they have over there. You can try out new things like calculus, analysis and the like by using their interactive courses and then you can drag around figurines, play around with crafts, etc. Interactive learning is at the core of the learning concept. And they provide you with nearly 70 interactive courses in all categories, STEM, be it mathematics, physics, chemistry, philosophy, whatever it is you want to learn, they probably got something up their sleeve for you. And if you want to try it out today, if you feel like trying out Brilliant and see for yourself if it fits your needs, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flambelmaths. With it, you are going to get, on the one hand, free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but more importantly, you can get a hold of the whole repertoire on the website by checking out the link. 20% of an annual premium subscription at that, which is a really great deal considering how much content they have available on the website already. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed what you have seen today and you want to see more mathematics, then also subscribe to the channel. If you want to see me working my wood, for example, this good old piece of cherry wood, don't ask me why I still have a lot of lumber laying around next to my chalkboard, then definitely make sure to also subscribe to Flemish Word. Link down there in the description and up here in the info box. And I'm until the next video and wish you guys a flammable day and please stay safe. Ciao!